There we go. Thank you very much for coming this afternoon to the eSports student panel. So we love these uh, panels because uh, we get a chance to hear from the students about their experiences and you get to question them and ask them about the, their, uh, how they feel about this uh, and uh, really get, gives you an eye-opening uh, because if you're looking into it, if you don't know what they're thinking, this is the best way to kind of get into their minds. So you know, open your minds up to these people, right? All right, yay. All right, so there we go. So first off, I want to see who's here. So uh, any elementary school teachers here? Okay. Oh, we have one? Okay, awesome. Uh, then we have anyone middle school, junior high? Okay, cool. And then uh, high school teachers? Okay. All right, couple. And then uh, anyone in college arena here? No? Nope. Okay. All right. Um, and just out of curiosity, adult ed? <laughs> okay, didn't think so. Just had to throw that in there. Um, and, uh, and administrators here. Okay, cool. So, as administrators, uh, I wanted to ask you, like, you know, what, what, what kind of, uh, what, what curiosity do you have about esports? Like, what is their, their pressing question? You know? Well, I, I just want to just kind of take a look at it to see how you're running it, uh, because I'm looking at possibly bringing in uh, as an afternoon, like a club, because I'm not able to run it through my traditional classes due to FTEs and things like that nature, but I want to bring it to the school. Very good. We started the program last year in our middle school and high school, and I'm looking to see what um, it's during the school. They're not playing the league or anything now. I didn't understand a lot about it because I wasn't in the position I'm in now. I wanted to understand more about what they're doing and see how we can grow up longer. Awesome. So I have a unique opportunity. We have a school that's becoming a School is going to focus on coding and some other stuff. And I know from two grown up gaming daughters that kids love this. Um, and so, using this along with some curricular things, so making it both a co curricular activity with uh, video game design and all that, but also extracurricular for the competition part. Awesome. Great, great. Uh, and those are definitely. Um, great perspective. So, you know, so, so just let's show up here, like, you know, who here knows absolutely nothing about uh, eSports? Raise your hand. All right. Great. All right, cool. All right, so who here, like, knows a little bit about it? You're just curious and exploring. Okay, great. Uh, who here is a noob? That means you started it and you're just kind of like flailing your hands and going, oh, gosh, I'm going into wild. Okay. Um, all right, so who here knows just enough to be dangerous? <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah, we got danger going right there. And who here are ultimate masters? All right, there we go. Here are the masters. Okay, great. We're here to help. Yeah, and and, the, and, the, and 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 as you know, like you know, esports was a major thing here at, at making schools work. Um, I was part of the team uh, working with uh, SREB to get esports into this uh, uh, conference. Uh, because uh, back in 2018, they were starting to recognize it, and they asked me, hey, Nye, what do you think about eSports? I'm like, this is the next big thing! <laughs> and in 2019, we went in and we go, okay, look, we're going to do this huge blowout. We're going to get eSports in. We're going to tell teachers all about it. This is, like, totally emerging. Like, you know, not many people are doing it. And then, of course, 2020, hmm, what happened? <laughs> then, so, so this is actually, you know, three years in the making, so we're really excited to bring it. But the thing is, eSports has really blossomed over the years during the pandemic because, uh, because it was uh, something that was accessible and for uh, students to do. So, but now we're back in the classroom and let's get, so we could like, really innovate in this space here. Uh, so as you know, for the one-on-one, uh, so, so tomorrow uh, there's more sessions on eSports. There's lots of sessions. So if you do a search on the uh, app, eSports comes up everywhere. So we got lots of speakers coming in. I'm going to be speaking tomorrow on, on eSports one-on-one where we're going to have I'll go into more depth and detail logistics about it, but this is really a student panel where you get to probe them about their experience, and we have our coach here, uh, Henry, who is a teacher. So Henry, come on in, up and introduce yourself. Hi. Hi everyone, my name is Henry Vo. I teach at Richardson High School. It's a, a suburb right outside of north of Dallas, so we're really close by. Uh, my actual unofficial official title is I am the director of the computer science magnet. I'm a computer science teacher, so coding right there. And then somewhere along the lines, I said, you know what, let's do an esports team. And that thing blew up. But more than one, tomorrow. So I know some of you are like, you want to know the insides out. And I know Nye has a panel tomorrow of just teachers, so you can probe me tomorrow. Okay, and I'm one of these kids talking 90% of the time for this video. Tomorrow you can like hear all my stories for that. Um, but I've been teaching for 16 years, and I started uh, doing esports for five years. And what I want to say about it, if you do want to come to the panel tomorrow about what I've done, my mistakes are going to be your successes. 
because these kids unfortunately had this, yeah, he's not his own, yeah, but we, <laughs> why did you make this? Yeah, but in the end, we made it happen, right? We made it, we made it happen, we made it happen. Well, so, oh, uh, this right here is Mr. Kincaid right here. He works alongside me on this right here. He also has to suffer through all, everything that I've toiled through. Well, so, not everything. But, I mean, I mean, I had some successes along the way. Yeah, so, anyway. So, but I do want yeah. you to ask these kids questions like how they, they have, you can say whatever you want about that. Tell you them, them, yeah, nice tell them you say. the truth. Honest to God. Yeah, there we go. Okay, if you tell me I yell to you know too much about them, just say it, okay? Because you do. You all need to know what it feels like from your, you know, how students are impacted and stuff like that. So that's where we're going to start with that. Okay. Okay. So now, um, so this session here, uh, me, I'm recording it, but uh, if you go to this website, kpkpkp.com, kp is what I do professionally. I, I do uh, gamification, I focus more on gamification, math learning, and education. I do a, a lot of stuff in, uh, um, uh, uh, in e-learning. I do, uh, uh, created a, a whole new platform back in 2010 when no, no one wanted it, which was like, you know, adaptive to artificial intelligence and gamification, go figure, who needs it now? <laughs> and then, uh, so basically, but anyway, but kp kp would take you to a form, uh, type in your email address, and then we'll email you the PowerPoint, uh, the video, and any articles that we have that are related to it, because we have a vast resource of articles that will help you get started as well, uh, on top of this as well. So, so let's go ahead and hear the students speak. So each of you students, I want you to uh, kind of like introduce yourself, if that's okay, and just say, you know, your name, your grade, and, uh, and, and what game you play. Okay, so let's start off with you. Uh, I'm Wiley Kimmel. Santa, Santa. Santa. Oh, okay. oh, oh. Uh, I'm Wiley Kimmel. I'm in 10th grade, uh, and I play Rainbow Six Siege in Minecraft. Move over. Uh, yeah. uh, I am Jack Nelson. I'm also in 10th grade, and I also play Rainbow Six Siege in Minecraft. Hello, my name is Mark Hutchins. Um, I'm a graduate in 2022, and I play League of Legends. Hi, I'm Patrick Murphy. I graduated about like a month ago. Good to see you. Uh, it doesn't matter. Um, I play uh, specifically IRHS uh, Splatoon 2, but outside of it, I also play uh, Pokemon VGC and Super Smash Bros. Melee. Uh, hi, I'm Petals. Um, I mainly play Splatoon 2, and I was a sub for Halo, just in IRHS as well. Hi, I am uh, Crow Salazar. Um, I mostly play Overwatch, but on site I do Valorant and Apex Legends. Hi, I'm Brad Slaughter. Um, I'm in 12th grade. I play Overwatch and Rocket League, and I've been in esports for about four years. Hi, my name is Aiden Laura. I'm in 9th grade, and my favorite game is Smash Bros. Awesome. Thank you very much. <laughs> Guys uh, and gals, so let's uh, go ahead and... so. We're going to actually open this, uh, the questions up to the panel. So this is going to be very organic. You know, if you have any questions that are pressing, launch them out there. If, if the room stays silent for more than 10 seconds, then I'll throw a question out at them. But, but we're just going to like, you know, play this conversationally. And kids, if you have any, if whoever wants to answer, please raise your hand and we'll call on you. And then we'll just go ahead and, and run with that. So anybody, what's your question? What's, what question do you is have for the kids? Is there a list of games that you can start out on? I mean, yes. Okay. Yeah, so, so what are some of the games? Um, well, we can go over those logistics, but there is a list of the games uh, that are out there, and there's a, there's a good variety, and each one will you know, cover different bases. Uh, but I think the best thing is survey your students first, okay. and, then, and then from that, correlate that with the list. So there's, there's tons of resources online that would actually give you that. Uh, but we could we could come up with a list from our hands because you know yeah yeah you kind of heard it so wait hold up we got Rocket. League of Legends Rocket League Overwatch Overwatch, Overwatch. Smash Bros Valorant Smash Bros Halo Minecraft Halo Minecraft, Halo, Halo, Minecraft. Halo, Minecraft. Rainbow Rainbow Six. Six. Splatoon, Mario Kart, Rainbow Six, Rainbow Six, Counter Strike, Valorant, yeah, 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 oh, okay. I think I think that's yeah. important. Do not say the F O word. I think that's something that's important is both um, okay. surveying your students and then also having something that has good opportunities. If something has good opportunities, um, like a certain game, maybe say Splatoon has good like traveling opportunities or even just like in city opportunities. Like if your city has a lot of good. Um, like a lot of good opportunities, there's a lot of other teams there. Try to find a game, uh, for, or try to make a team for that, and people will show up, um, most likely. 
So many sport games. So like your like your Madden and stuff like that. There are kids who play that. We just it's like Barrett said. Like we just don't have a player for yeah. that kind of thing. I, I noticed y'all didn't say Fortnite. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> oh, that was on premise. So let's hear from the middle okay, so schoolers. We had our middle yeah. schooler here. But he just left middle school. He, he was in ninth grade now. Oh, yeah, but you were in ninth grade. Uh, when it came to Fortnite, I feel like it was its own different genre. Okay. Of esports, like it's still a competitive thing, but it never had like the esports title on it. Okay. Uh, but okay. It, it was very popular, but then people started moving to that game, but other games, the Epic Games, had made. Okay. So, okay. okay. However, I will need to interject on that. A little while ago, I do remember that there was a Fortnite World Championship and some kid won, what was it, three million dollars? Way too much money to be resolved. Way too much money, yeah. Okay, great question. And, you know, good question. Uh, you know, we opened up a can of worms. <laughs> anyway, all right, so let's go ahead and... So, I, oh. Oh, yeah, you have some. Sorry. Okay, so real quick with the Fortnite thing again. With Fortnite, it's a little bit harder to find other people who like, or different leagues and stuff that do okay. Fortnite and stuff. Though Fortnite is more of like the battle royale that's more seen throughout middle school esports and high school esports with the battle royale genre because you don't always have to have a team because there are solo games. Okay, stuff. so it's not it's not much of a team game. It's not why it's... yeah, it's not always much of a okay. team game. Okay. Actually, uh, more of a team game with Battle Royale is uh, Apex Legends. Uh, so, right, okay, I actually have a note about that. So, at least for the high up level, there are team based game, uh, game modes. Sometimes there's uh, duo tournaments or trios. Um, primarily for high school and maybe middle school, I'm not sure. Uh, but it is mostly solos. Um, there are leagues for it. I believe there's Play VS, right? Uh, Play VS is a pretty popular league with uh, high school, and they offer uh, Fortnite that's uh, built into the client uh, of the game, so you can load into a tournament uh, no problem. But yeah, for uh, Fortnite as a competitive game for the younger ages, it's mostly solos. Okay. Okay. So your question. So how do you guys um, recruit? other students to join you and how do you like how do you um, talk to kids in school how does it relate to just the whole school <coughs> community you know what I'm saying because esports is relatively quote new um, and so how how does that work at your school so for at least our school specifically um, we have a lot like during COVID so during that, at least how my friend recruited me was, I was like, yeah, like I don't have much music. Do you want to do esports? I could ask Vo to start like the Splatoon team for you. And I was like, no, you don't have to. He was like, no, I'm going to. And then he got everyone together, and then he did. He was like, hey, I did my job. I and he just did. Stop trying. He's like, I started it. No, he's like, I'm gonna ask them, and then he did, and then he, and then it was like, Oop. but yeah, it's. I don't know, I think a lot of it is just like Vo and Kincaid because they're pretty popular in our school for like just, their rooms are just like the chill rooms. People just go there, we're 90% of the time we're playing games, which three of us like, yeah, we're going to be having an esports meeting if you want to play. Because, you know, if you're playing games 24-7, it's like, maybe you want to play with other people. Just like, you know, just throwing an idea out there, which most of the time they do. I can also answer this one. So a big part of the way they advertise it to other students is, well, first of all, there's the giant esports banner in front of Kincaid's room <laughs> with a QR code under it with links to the website and the Discord server that we use and all that. I know we post that school. all over the school. Yeah, and the, that QR code is all over the school. And occasionally during the year, they said something about it on the announcements about if you wanted to join the esports team, you could go to Mr. Bowers or Kincaid's room after school and just ask them about it. Okay. Um, so also that it's the big part of you know the banners and the flyers. It's also the repetition because 
I had the opportunity to join it my freshman year, but I had so many other stuff that I was doing. I had to do band and whatnot, and I was so involved with that that I was like, I don't, I don't need to join like a club or whatever. And so my senior year, I realized I was just doing nothing. <laughs> like I would go to school and I would finish before like two or three o'clock, and I would just go home. And I would have the rest of the day to do like two pages of homework, and I would, I would be done. And so I was like, I'm, I'm going to try to get involved with something. And that's how I found the club because it was like the easiest club to find because it was everywhere. And uh, again, not a lot of people in school were really talking about it. I feel like it was more of just the flyers and the attention uh, over the intercom or whatever and the morning announcements that really drew me to it. And and also, didn't your brother? And yeah, my brother did do it, but I was again like it was more like in school. I found it more in school than really my brother talking about it. So. Um, so I think I remember talking to you about this. Our middle school, also the middle school that leads into us, um, they also have an esports program, and we're starting to like uh, like talk with them, like farm system, type of right? Like get from directly from them. So that's like the start of a, a kind of important the program that we want to do is like bring them from there and start like after school, maybe like training sessions or like summer camps for the middle schoolers that they can come up. That's kind of a plan that I've been thinking about. I think that they've been thinking about as well. We wanted to do it, but we couldn't find out how to do it. It's hard. Another way that it's like, um, like yeah, we also advertise with uh, announcements and posters, but a lot of it is really just word of mouth. Um, uh, contrary to popular belief, people like to play video games. Um, I feel like most Shocking. people That's like so to do that. I know. So so what do you, like, no, I know. You mean kids that oh, like yeah. you know they like to play? Yeah, like people like to play video games. Well. Like they like to play with their friends. If there's something that is about video games, and since a lot of high schoolers like to play it, so obviously it's going to gravitate towards it. And it's just all of those, um, uh, all of those other avenues of reaching out to people, and then just uh, either being aggressive with it, or being like, hey, we have an eSports thing. That's pretty cool, I guess. Um, Sounds like after school. Yeah, it's just um, it's just a bunch of different avenues. Some could be aggressive, some could be casual. It's just um, based to uh, not each individual person's needs, but like we have different paths, so people can ease into it if they want to. I will add on to that just a little bit. I know it's a student panel, but. Um, <laughs> she gets like, I'm a child now. I'm always a kid at heart. Um, the, the way we see it, and um, I will add on to Patrick's word of mouth comment, is that for us, it's not so much a club or a team, it's more of a community at our school. It's like, we don't want to see us as like, hey, this is a team where in the end we want to win, despite what Vo feels like. Um, or a club where we just hang out. Um, we see it more like, hey, we're all gamers here. We all want to hang out with people. We want to get to know other people. We want to build a community around each other. So, like, basically how you see in a bunch of other things in school, like art and music and all that stuff. So, we take in anyone who wants to play games. Even if they don't want to play competitively, we'll take them in. Yeah. And it just creates that sense of community for us. So, so I'm going to kind of like on the same topic, I'm going to ask a question. But diversity, equity, inclusion is one of the big, biggest yes. parts of uh, girls. sport. And gr yeah, girls. Yeah, definitely girls. Yeah. Um, girl. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone points at the pet. And anyone that doesn't feel welcome. Well, we got it right. Anybody who doesn't feel welcome. Andy said that's the that's thing. So I wanted to ask the question. Anybody here of, of your group, or if you know any, anybody else, um, is this is the only club that you ever joined in school? Like, like, like anybody? Like, or do you also are part of other clubs as well? Does band count? Yeah, band does count. Yeah. So um, that's up for debate. Let's go with that. <laughs> hey, let's go down the line and also tell what else you're involved. Can we go, Zach? No, so, yes, yes, yes. So let's have a All right. So what other clubs are you involved with other than these sports? Uh, band and athletics. Band and athletics? Okay. Um, soccer, computer science, cyber security. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> animation and this club, formerly orchestra, but not anymore. 
I did a lot of clubs freshman year and then COVID, and now I'm an online only school for that this year. So literally esports. Yeah. <laughs> With no human contact whatsoever. She's only online. So. No, <laughs> Um, I'm an Eagle Scout, fun fact. Um, I think that's it actually. <gasps> oh, you're ready for food. <laughs> what are you trying oh, to do? Oh, we're not speaking about that. We're not speaking about that. Fine, I'll say fire. Fire. Welcome to the Chaos of the Sun Club. Fire is cool. No, it isn't. I was in it. Sorry, sorry. Uh, okay, so I was part of a teaching internship. Um, which is a dual credit course at Dallas College. Um, I was a student employee at RISD. I was um, club, a uh, thespian club, and an esports club, and then uh, technical theater. So I was a part of every musical and show that we did at our high school. Uh, I am in band, and that's about it, <laughs> besides esports. You thought I swam? Oh, you say swim? Did you say swim? Guys, guys, this is why you're not. Guys, guys, so whoa, 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 your question, sir. I've got a, a few questions here. All so right. A couple of them are going to be easy to answer, but I'm curious uh, about how big is your school? I'm curious, like, how big your school is? It's a pretty, pretty big group well, here to play. Um, how long has your uh, eSports team been established? And then I'd like to know about time commitment. And I'm, I'm thinking officially and unofficially. I mean, I'm thinking officially, are there official practices that are scheduled, but then uh, unofficially, how much are you practicing on your own? So, uh, how big is the school, first of all? Maybe <laughs> start with that. So, uh, these guys right here, all up there, are at the same school, and you're at uh, Play Rock Middle School, right? Yeah, so, so just so you know, we're, yeah. So, okay. okay, so our school is pretty big. It has, like, I don't know the exact number, it can go to like around. Oh, that one. per grade or a thousand total? Per grade, So, you know, how many grades do you need in middle school? Three. So, three thousand. About three thousand. What's the name of the school? The middle school? Oh. Laylac like Middle School. What? Laylac Middle School. Laylac? So, Laylac. Laylac is three thousand. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm talking about high school. No, no, no. How many students are in the high school? So we have 3,000 students at RHS, Bridgeton High School, okay. um, part of RSD, yeah. and um, Bridgeton Independent School. Gotcha. Um, and then we've been established five years, right? Am I correct? So five, well, five and a half, sir. Yeah. Five and a half. yeah. Going on six. So. Um, and then, I'm sorry, I'm totally forgot. Time uh, time time time. So, uh, yeah, everyone's different. Uh, for my team, for League of Legends, <laughs> uh, we would set up a scrim uh, against our other team. We have two uh, scrimmage. Um, we have two teams, which are teams of five. I had ten people on my team, and the other team had like six or seven people, and so we could scrimmage like every other Thursday or so. But we had a definite, like, hard time, definite hard time on Tuesdays. That's whenever we actually played in the play versus tournament or whatever. But after that, we kind of just, like, chilled. They talked a little bit. But we only really showed up in person on Tuesdays for the games and then talked a little bit after. Um, I wasn't really – I'm sorry. I'm the team captain for that team. And so going into it, I really wasn't – trying to be like, oh, we have to practice every Thursday. I, I kind of like put school first. I'm like, you know, grades are first, always. They were, they were a big advocate for that, and I was especially for that. I was like, grades are more important than any game online. So 
I'm trying to balance that and also getting scrimmage was really hard for me. So I just kind of like, hey, can we do this time next week? And they were like, sure. And I'm like, okay, double checking, we've got it. And then next week I would update them on that. And that's literally all I did. So like it was like a two hour commitment after school for me, and that was it. <laughs> So and it was, let's go with Barrett. We'll go with Barrett. So hold hold up. He had something. Else. Uh, so this is this is happening after school. Yes. yes. So the games happen. Um, our games usually happen at four thirty, and school ended around four ten for us. So we would just commute um, commute at the computer lab for like twenty minutes, and then okay. play the game. They're four thirty to what time? Like six thirty. It, it depends. Uh, so for League of Legends, our an average game is thirty to forty five minutes. Okay. So sometimes we're there till six thirty. Okay. Other times maybe we started later and um, it, we didn't leave till seven or seven thirty. It just <laughs> depends. Yeah, we were there for seven thirty because a team yeah. was really annoying. But what? Oh, I know. yeah, that time. <laughs> sure, right. yeah, I got a lot to say about this. So our uh, our Overwatch teams. Definitely one of the most competitive teams on our esports program. Um, it, 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 it's like, the most competitive team. We went to nationals recently. Um, but anyways, the team we wanted to be like a real like esports team. We wanted to be really competitive. So as our team was, we kind of overworked ourselves on putting up a, a lot of practices, practices and games. And we had three games a week which was very much not ideal. We had two hours, two hour blocks for these games or scrims. So we had a scrim on a weekend. Every weekend we had a scrim. And then three games a week, which was way more than I think we should have done as a team, but we wanted to really be competitive and win like, like all the way. But as a team, I don't think doing, like pushing your students past like where they are losing out on work, which is later in the season we realized this. So we started canceling practices, quitting leagues so that our students could get more time like studying and like um, getting ready for like school and exams. And I think that's super important is like listening to your wishes of the students. Like if they are struggling in school, um, sometimes we need to cut back on practices because our like official practices and then unofficially half of our team practices three to four hours out of school, um, probably eight hours a week out of school, and then some of them do like nothing, and that's okay, and we're totally cool with that, but it's uh, really just about the in school, or like the official hours that are kind of valuable. You can fix it. Uh, mine was, you basically covered it, that it just depends on the competitiveness of the team and which game you're playing. Yeah. Oh, track's and so, uh, why not? We both play the same Rainbow Six Siege. It's the way we practiced was a lot different than some of our more competitive teams. I'll just say we weren't the best uh, at the game, so we treated it like kind of more just a casual, fun experience. Uh, we didn't do team practices. The practice that you'd get for the game was just you'd play on your own time. You could play with your friends if you wanted, and then we played once a week games on Thursdays. On yeah, it was Thursdays. We didn't have two teams. We had just one whole team and a couple of subs. Yeah, a couple of subs. A lot of times kids couldn't play because of homework. I had homework a lot of time. Yeah. So we just had kids. If you wanted to play that week, you could play. And it's it's two different sides of the spectrum. They have the more competitive games. We have our much more casual ones where we're just in it to have fun and play together. Yeah. Can students be on multiple teams? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. 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 He, I, I don't know, I think the answer got lost, but we have 3,000 students. How many are actually on the team out of 3,000? Oh, my God. Um, okay, we don't have like... Ballpark, uh, 200. Okay. Yeah. We have 200 on our Discord server, and we have closer to like 100, oh, this is a really weird number right here, 110 kids who are active on it. Okay. Um, now that does, I will add on to this, that doesn't mean that all the students are active players. It doesn't mean like they're all involved in leagues, but like in terms of actual players, we have what, three Overwatch teams, two League of Legends teams. There's a lot of people, there's probably about 100. Uh, no, I, I think in terms of like active players, that, like, yeah, like active. Active. No, I no it's probably more like 80. Yeah. Like 80 active players that were playing to like 
compete in tournaments. So I'm sorry to like yeah. enjoy this one here. I need to pull an apple asterisk next to that right there because we are a school of three thousand and there are other we have three other high schools in our district also that are three thousand plus. But they don't have esports games. Yeah. And we've actually me and Mr. K have actually tried to to, to start them at the schools to see it. We went to one school and we we told them, hey, you guys can advertise, uh, this date will come and stuff like that. I think we had 10 people show up. Uh, wait, which school is this? Pierce? Okay. <laughs> the other one, the one where I asked. Oh, oh, but, oh that, oh, yeah. was, yeah. that was right before COVID hit. When, and I'm going to give a little history on this one here because, you know, we do it five and a half years ago, five and a half years ago. Somebody's, were you there? I'm sorry, who, who was the first one? Yeah. You were there. Yeah. For, can I, can I Go ahead, say it. So, when I was a freshman for the first semester, mm -hmm. I was actually at Berkner High School, mm -hmm. and there was a kind of esports thing that was going on, because I knew about uh, RHSs, and I was like, okay, well, maybe Berkner has one. Uh, they had about seven kids, and I tried to, like, uh, they were all just, like, casual gaming. It wasn't even esports, it was just, like, yeah, it was damning, but they called themselves these words, and I was like, maybe, like, you know, if you're actually wanting to compete, like, I tried to push them, try and build it up, and every single recommendation that I made to them, they just completely denied. <laughs> uh, so I was like, screw that noise, so I just didn't do it. Um, and then I transferred to RHS right before the end of the first semester, and then uh, it was, Theirs was like still like relatively well sized, but not too terribly large. And then I tried to also implement my ideas, and <laughs> here we are. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's so, smack. I do have a question for you all. So when we do our initial meetings at the beginning of the year, how big is it? <laughs> so, I can describe it very accurately. Go ahead, accurately so describe it. So basically, we got. Actually, this is kind of the side. This is the side. Yeah. yeah. So we have one side of the room, uh, red side, blue side. It's like there are tables and everything. But on both sides, in like uh, more near the tables and the computers and everything, it's filled like a great right, ocean of kids. And then we have, the front, we have kids all over the couches, like all over the floor and everything, pulling up chairs everywhere. So but before I get to your question, just for, just for context, Henry, how many first year, second year, third year, fourth year? It's just like you know, what what is your growth your growth trajectory uh, from your first? Oh, year? like oh shoot, okay. Uh, so so first year, okay. So I'll give you this one here. We broke fire code every single year. Yes. Okay. okay. That's that's what we're getting out of here. Um, Growth wise, I, 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 I don't have numbers on it, but we kind of say we, we get bigger basically each year, no matter what. Yeah, so you started with 50, then 100, then 5,000? I think we're kind of capping out because we're fighting, just, we're fighting all the kids who are doing it. So I think we are going to hit a cap though. It's no different than any other sports. Like you're going to have so many kids that come do that do basketball. Yeah, hopefully, you don't have a basketball team with like 500 kids. <laughs> what the yeah. heck is that? Yeah. So, yeah. Like, <coughs> like, like last time I checked, um, the amount of students that we've had like, come and go. Thousand minimum. Yeah, and that's over like the last four years that I've been there. So, uh, so do you, as the coach and instructor, do you monitor the Discord and have you had any disciplinary issues with things happening with Discord that should be? <laughs> 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 yeah. 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 yeah, we need to really start disciplining you. Like everything is like. I just think I have a good example for this. There's a player <laughs> and who is named, unnamed, unnamed, but no, 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 you know, it, it's, it's, ah, uh, okay, so, this is a type of player or a type of student, he just kind of speaks without thinking, and so, the same thing with typing, and so, he made a, a really bad joke um, that I just, like, it just did not sit well, and I was like, I, I told them, I was like, hey, I DM'd them after I read it, I was like, it's not like really a cool joke, um, like, I, I just don't think it's really that good in general, and so, after I told them that, I went to Mr. Kincaid and Mr. Vo, I don't think I took a screenshot of it, I should have, but I, I told them basically the gist of the joke, and I told them that he said that, and I was like, 
I don't know what I should do because I was like a first year captain as well. And so I was like, I don't know what I should do, but I just want to let you know it did get deleted. He did delete it. But th that's what the joke was. And I told him, like, that's not really good. And they handled it. They, they talked to him. They said, okay, this is your warning. I think that you have you know, three strikes or whatever. You, you guys talked about this in the beginning. There's three strikes. You're out. So I'm glad, well, I'm glad, I'm glad Mark brought that up because I'm, I understand that communication is always an issue with stuff like that. Fortunately, we're at a school where these kids, these kids they take pride in their, their community and their clubs. So we do have student moderators, student captains who watch out for that kind of stuff because we cannot be on there 24-7. And, 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 and we also have multiple teachers on there. It's not just the two of us. It's like we have, what, five or six other teachers with us? So we do have we do have trustworthy kids who will bring to attention any issues that we have, and then we will address it in person as we need to. Yeah. Um, oh, sorry, go ahead. So, um, this is an action. The kind of administration, can I just move into like administration of our teams a little bit? Yeah, yeah um, It's kind of, we have a student, more student led program. Um, it's obviously uh, our administrators do a lot for us and they are a lot about the management kind of side, but we kind of, as together as a team, we make sure we keep each other in check. Um, and a lot of the time, the captains or the like admin roles, the those kind of students will check in uh, with everyone on how everyone's feeling, or they will kind of if something happens, they will talk to that person, and if the problem escalates to far enough where they have to do it, then they'll get involved. But it doesn't create so much problems for them, the administrators, because we kind of handle most of the stuff on our own. Uh, there is plenty of times where it's hard to do that, um, but at most of all, we kind of keep each other in check and it works pretty well. I haven't noticed too many problems with the most of our teams are Some like this, stuff like that happens. And I will add on one thing. Most of the time we keep track of what they say and like, we don't get directly involved, but most of the time we still look at it and we can tell like, hey, if there's an issue coming up and like, we trust them to be able to solve it, but we have to, we will still keep an eye on it. Um, but we won't step in unless, you know, something happens. So. All right, so <coughs> you had a question there? Yeah, after, yeah. I was just going to inquire, what would your startup cost? Oh, I'll let him talk. You guys know what this costs? You well, have uh, 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 wait, 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 Oh, Zero. Okay. Zero. 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 No. So, um, I, I want you to hear from them. I try to make it very clear with these kids that because they put the effort into it, and they don't pay a single except for him. We had to go to Florida. That's a different story. That's a different story. <laughs> and, 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 so, we fundraise. Ingram, Ingram. We, we fundraise those. We fundraise. Okay. So, startup cost of this one, it's, it's not even a startup cost, it's just a, a maintenance cost because these elites are not for free. Right. So, well, some on most time. Most of our, yeah, if, you're, if it's anything that's what we call like a platform for it, it's going to cost money. Uh, TechSef is one of the very few ones that's Texas based, but um, depending on where you live in your state, you might have one that's scholastic and it's free. Okay, now yeah, get your answer on that one. Expect to pay somewhere between the thousands to two thousands. I don't, I've not seen three thousand yet. Okay, and this is hang on, this is per semester. Okay, okay, per semester. okay because th there were some, some but, companies I was looking at, and mm -hmm. you, you're looking at, I was talking about starting up with about 15 students, and you're talking about like 20 something thousand dollars. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, that's no. okay. That's, well, no. that's what are they? Uh, I have to ask you. Like, are they offering like the, the PCs and stuff like that as well, or is it just? I have my own PC. Okay. I have my own lab. I think it was just just going to have a, a person, you know, via Zoom working uh, with my instructor. So that would be like someone coming in to coach you all. Is that correct? I, I guess. Yeah. Okay. So there are companies out there who will will take you back to what you're doing and then charge you on that one right there for their services or whatever it might be and stuff like that. They'll help you manage and coach and stuff like that. Because technically our role right here is we're not actually teaching them all the games because they're they're better than we are. <laughs> it's, um, it's student life. It's student life coaching. Yeah, so that's why I wanted to get information in reference to startup. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I can clearly answer your question uh, in a bit about how much it costs because there's a lot of cost to it. And that's my job is to make sure it costs. But, I'm giving you some numbers. It's four digit figures, four digit figures for the leagues, and then any equipment that you have on, on as well. And we make the kids actually, they have to pay for their own games because we 
can't license their names. Yeah, there are a few things that we make the kids pay for, but we don't. We do our best to make sure that they never have to pay to oh, actually yeah, compete. I'm not even worried about the, the kids. God right. wouldn't charge the kids. I'm just talking about starting it for okay. the program <laughs> itself and, and computers. Well, I have computers and things yeah. of that nature. Well, so. when we started, like, zero yeah, dollars. Yeah, like when we started, it, when we started, well, I wasn't there, but to my knowledge, it's not about the money in the end. You can have all the money in the world, that doesn't mean you have a great program. I understand that. I'm just talking about starting bringing it in. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. I'm not even talking about it. But I'm also right. worried. <laughs> you have a computer lab. You got kids that want to do it. They're playing the games already. Um, your question is, I think as we said, is, it sounds like it's 1,000, 2,000 in these fees to keep that in the tournaments. Yes. Yeah, exactly. And what else in addition to that? I think that's what So why was going to say also in addition to that right there is your work. Uh, your computers, um, a lot of the games that people play now are more high end and require, are, they're more demanding on computers. You have to make sure that they have the uh, proper parts to um, yeah, run these games with high frame rates to make sure that um, there's no lag, <coughs> there's no disconnecting, or stuff like that to make sure that people don't get kicked out. And that's going to be um, on the, yeah, it's going to be on more expensive on that uh, large spectrum of the things you're going to have to pay for. What so, computers do y'all use the most, Macs or, or, or? A lot of it is just our personal stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, I was just gonna say, like, yes, it's also the computers, but then like a lot of the games are on like the Nintendo Switch and stuff, yeah. which again, like the kids will have to get themselves. But that is also like something to think about because <coughs> we've had cases where like we like let's say we forgot our suit somewhere, we lost it. Usually not lost it, but you know we just forgot it. Kids like we also share just most of the time for games. Because like, oh hey, I forgot my game. Anyone have like, can someone bring theirs? And we usually do that. So it is like, it's not just like it's every kid for themselves. It's very much a collaborative effort sure. between the teachers and the students. Because you kind of have to be like, oh like, hey, like my computer's not working or X Y Z. Can I play at the school? And then like, you know, we figure something out. Or like, hey, like my equipment's malfunctioning. And then we also like, you know, try to work with everyone. So it's not just like, you know, like get the high end PCs and then you're good. So. That actually reminds me of one thing. In terms of the startup costs, tournaments are one thing, but like having backup equipment in case students don't have their stuff is sometimes good as well. Because like we have at least one Nintendo Switch that I don't still don't know how I got the school to buy. Um, <laughs> and we I was able to buy controllers, I was able to buy head well, get some headphones. We were able to get some stuff. Um, some of it was luckily free, but startup costs should also possibly include um, additional equipment just in case. Okay, so because I work in a school district where our kids don't necessarily have this stuff at home. So like, I've got to be thinking about how am I going to provide that everything a kid might need. Yeah, yeah. We, uh, you know, we should definitely discuss this tomorrow. Here we will. Yeah, so I'll like, do it. Yeah, we'll, we'll have more teachers on that. Okay. Yeah. 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 So in our school and everything, we're using the other jobs, the ones in Kinkreads and Rose Room. We have Dell computers. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 Y
Yes. So my last my question is, do you have a Discord page in middle school? Yes, we did, and Ooh. most of the people I knew, because I got along with a lot of people at school, okay. were in that community, and yeah. Does it, and it, does a teacher monitor more than, say, they do we in, have, in high school since they're younger? We have the one teacher that is trying her best to monitor everything. We haven't had problems in any way of a kid going to the <coughs> rampage on Discord. I could say the only problem we had. I would, I would be worried about the language. That's what I would be worried about. Yeah, I mean, the only problem we had is someone sending something that wasn't appropriate. Right. And that kid got banned. Okay. He wasn't allowed. Okay. Yeah, because in middle school we're more impulsive and we make more yeah. crazy yeah. rash decisions, and that's why I was wondering if you even had this workage. About the language, there's actually uh, Discord just implemented a feature for it, and there's bots you can add to your server. There's certain words and stuff you can block people from saying. So even if they typed it and there was no one online to stop them, it automatically would delete it. Yeah. Um, I just want to say that, uh, like with Discord specifically, like I, if I remember correctly, didn't our school ban it to be used on like school? We are not allowed to use Discord on school Wi-Fi or networks. Exactly. Yeah, so it kind of has to be like unofficial, okay. official teams. Like, that makes sense. That's, that's not our school. Yeah, because yeah, like, uh, so a lot, like if you send them like an announcement and stuff, like, like our teachers send them out like weeks in advance if they can. So that kind of has to be monitored too, because a lot of kids like, because there's just so many messages. Some kids have them muted and stuff, so like you kind of have to think about that too to tag individual kids. So I have a question. As a result of being in this esport um, arena and club. Have your career and educational goals changed? Yeah, that's good. <laughs> okay. So, did you say Preston? Oh, I did say Preston. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I, I'm half asleep right now. I'm sorry. Um, actually, yeah. So, before I was doing esports, I was dead set on I want to do mechanical engineering. Uh, but after doing uh, like actively competing, and then this last semester I went into more of like a like an actual coach slash managerial role uh, on the team. I realized that this is something like I really really am passionate about, and I really enjoy. So um, one of the avenues that I'm looking at for studying is while I'm doing um, Dallas College, getting my basic credits out of the way, I'm taking a, a six month course at SMU specifically about sports management and how to properly run an organization and uh, tournament organize because it's something that I want to do and it's something I want to help foster and keep growing because at the moment the entire esports industry is valued at what 1.7 billion dollars it, and it's biggest sports thing out there I think. yeah it's uh, projected to keep going up and up so I want to just help build that and help be a part of that and um, uh, yeah, like I want to help uh, manage teams and help build it and help uh, further legitimize it. Okay. So, so, sorry. So for me, um, throughout <coughs> high school, we have a magnet system at our high school, and so I've been a part of Tegmal Theater, which is the backstage work of theater, and it ties in. Trust me. So <laughs> uh, in ninth grade, I was really dead set on being a stage manager, and so managing everything backstage. And it's a really hard job, but I really enjoyed it. And so as I went on in ninth grade and 10th grade, it became more and more difficult to do that position because all the other you know, higher ups would always take it, would always get it because they've already done it before and I, been, I never got a chance to do it. And so it kind of killed my passion for that. But after doing the esports club, and uh, getting to be a captain, it, it just like, even though it was just a you know, message a day saying, hey, tomorrow we have a game, make sure to bring your keyboard, your mouse, your mouse pad, whatever, and they would still forget it. Um, it, it just made me, um, it sparked uh, the passion of just being a, more of a manager again, and getting, uh, again, leadership skills was also a big thing, like um, calling the shots, it, it was just fun, and getting to be a part of it and just not be like a person on the bench. Um, also, I mentioned earlier that I had like 10 people on my team in a five person game, trying to rotate them around and trying different things. It, it was fun just.
playing with everyone, just casually, competitively, um, just rotating them around, um, and just being, you know, the manager of that, and being like, oh yeah, you get to play today, you played last week, let's give someone else, you played two weeks in a row, Ch charting that, uh, you know, it was just fun. So, it, it's kind of sparked that passion in me. Excuse so, me. Did you have anyone to answer? Could I ask a question? Throughout those two, y'all to uh, those challenges go, y'all just say it forth, and y'all just say it. Uh, do they are they offering scholarships for that esports? And like you said, that it's college and whatever. Is that one of y'all goals to receive a scholarship? So go ahead and be a manager and. Uh, there is one player I don't remember. William. Yeah, uh, he received what thousand dollars? What was Williams? I thought it was yeah. It was yeah, ten grand. Uh, he got a ten thousand dollars scholarship to go to somewhere. I don't know. Okay. I don't know. Uh, he got offered a ten thousand dollars scholarship to play collegiate Overwatch. Uh, I'm doing Dallas College because it's free for our yes. kids. But, uh, that's fine. But um, I have or not me personally. Sorry. So play versus. I think they do give out scholarships, but. Um, I'm not that good at the game, <laughs> so uh, I just don't get scholarships. I just did it for fun because I was like, you know, I'm not doing anything anyways again. So I didn't get scholarships. I know people who have got scholarships. I know people, if they do really well, they do get scholarships. So it's a definitely possibility. Just I is an EGF do manager scholarships like managerial role scholarships? Oh, they do. I know something. There's something that was managerial role scholarships for esports that I saw at one point. Um, so yeah, that could have been an avenue for some people. Yeah, they so. they say something. Going back to the career thing, my best friend, I'm going to say his name, Max, is getting into indie development, which, if you don't know, is basically one person makes a game. Now, he got this instance, uh, inspiration when doing esports because he loved the game Smash Bros. as we played together every day. That Him making indie games and giving him a chance to make a name for himself and make I mean, people enjoy his game. Uh, also, I got a total fun fact that Pokemon if, is giving scholarships and they spoke a new game called Pokemon Unite. And if you get good at it, they'll let you give you a scholarship. Uh, look, you can look it up right now if you want to. Speaking of, I actually, I'm not, I'm sure that you guys were paying attention during the introduction, but uh, I actually do play competitive Pokemon. Mm -hmm. I do the video game. Uh, they, for, at least for uh, under 16, they, like for major tournaments, they do give out scholarship money. I'm pretty sure if you win a regional event, you get like $1,000 in scholarship money if you're under the age of 16. Because myself, uh, I have won, I think, $500 or so uh, from competing in it. And if you play at the international or the world stage, which I have done, I'm a brag. Um, <laughs> Um, the winner across all age divisions, um, it can range from anywhere from 10 to 20 grand. Uh, didn't win anything from that one. So, but, you know. We got about five minutes left, so anybody else want to answer the career question? He's got a question, but really quick, anybody else change their careers or change their aspirations or anything? Okay, what's your question, sir? Okay, so in my state of Missouri, all sports has to belong or be governed by the State Athletic Association. Yeah. Yeah. I, I guess that's true with you guys too. Actually, how, how does that play in... Okay. It doesn't. It doesn't. <laughs> it doesn't. <laughs> so, <laughs> so the kids are... You guys know anything about it? Or? Yeah. 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 So, so Missouri. Missouri. Okay. Okay. So we have to adhere to all yeah. of the rules of that practice and how much coaches right. are paid and how all money hours they work right. every day. And I, I would hope that you guys ask this question to another group, like for the teacher panel, next uh, tomorrow or something like that. Yeah. Right? But to answer with this group right here, uh, the state of Texas has to be called UIL, University of Interscholastically, which is run out of the University of Texas. It's Correct. academic and athletic. Okay. Sure. And it's the same thing that you have right here. UIL, uh, I'm sorry, eSports was supposed to be part of UIL, but there are some, there's a lot of um, unknowns right now, okay? This is my personal opinion. I don't want it part of the UIL. Because you can see it makes them do a lot of things. They have to have a curriculum. Right. They That's have to have right. by the rules. Right. And there's a big thing right here. They do not win sponsorship money. Right. I know. Good. Right. Yeah. So we have to do it. So, that's why so we don't have that here. And 
um, fight you tooth and nail on major, well, yeah. keep it separate. But again, if your state does that right there, we have to go through that state league and stuff like that. There are some companies that partner with that state league and stuff like that as a uh, platform. Okay. And that's how it works with them. But again, it's. And are you guys treated like athletic coaches at your school? Or <laughs> 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 yeah, just coach tells its pants. Bro, we have some money I got. Look at I. We are uh, we are not like the, the sports coaches here in Texas. You know, football bigger Texas. We because that's what we're required. So, to do. Um, I can actually answer that one a bit more too. Um, we are technically an after-school thing, and even then, we don't get anything for that. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's like an unofficial. It's an unofficial. Thing. Thing. I have to donate for the money from our current college people to our staff, and it's not a very large amount. I think it's less than like a thousand. I give it to these guys right here because you give it to me. I give it to you, Paige. Um, so yeah, these uh, these uh, our sponsors right here are are doing it because of this right here, and because uh, we love you all. Okay. So, <laughs> Well, that's up for debate some days. Um, oh, I am honest. But um, to we further, like you sometimes too. Thank you for the honesty. Uh, um, in terms of the coach stuff, I have never gone around and had anyone, either faculty or student, ever call me Coach Kincaid. <laughs> Would you like to start? Yes, we're at. Yes. Yes. Yeah. No, so like, I'm never we're not that. really considered with that role, mainly because esports isn't nearly a official thing, so to speak, but it'd be, I don't know, maybe in the way we have it right now. So. Yeah, like, like, the, uh, like we said it earlier, we more have like student, like, you know, coaches technically, so like, we don't want to, yeah, like, these guys are really good. I, I believe you and I agree, the problem is we're already stuck in this. Yeah, so, 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 yeah, so, yeah, so it's not really yeah. good for that. In our case, we like the whole thing to talk to change. Okay, so, uh, so how many so how many girls are are playing on? There's Six. one on my team. Seven. 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 Yeah. Oh, fun fact for Splatoon: Eight. over half of the team was oh. someone besides Amanda. One of the one, 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 one of the uh, we have two teams. One of the entire teams was all. Yeah. How, how, do you, yeah. how do you like that? I, I didn't mind it. Like it yeah. wasn't like a negative. Did, did you play on the all girls team? Yeah, I did. Yes. Okay. Uh, did, did give you a number on it. Um, also, it wasn't just like it wasn't a they divided us, so it was like an all girls, all boys yeah, team. It just that's just how. It, yeah. Yeah, because yeah. in the beginning, <laughs> it was like interest. So it was like okay, these people are interested. These are the subs. These are the people. Great, have fun. Last semester, we had two guys total. <laughs> so. It wasn't a, uh, let's separate them because we couldn't separate them. Yeah, it was um, just like, we Yeah, it was just, we did it based yeah. off of skill. Oh, okay. yeah. oh, yeah, don't worry about it. I mean, I just want to be conscious of everyone's time because I yeah, know you got people got more sessions to go to. There's so many great sessions. But I wanted to give you guys, give the students a chance to give them a round yeah. of applause. Yeah. Thank you for coming out here in the summer. Uh, yeah. They're not in school, but they're here to be true. Yeah, you're yeah, so happy. Happy. So thank you very much. <laughs>